Welcome everybody to another Intent Company Live. I'm Billy Robbins, founder of Intent Company. Today is Tuesday, March 12th, and we are live from a new location. Thanks everybody for uh, joining, and um, yeah, I'm excited to get into it today. We're going to go through, um, actually something I was pondering last week, which I'm calling 10 Character Traits. 10 Character Traits of Successful Entrepreneurs. And so, um, looking forward to digging in on that. Um, before we get started on all the stuff, you can just help us out by, you know, doing all the things, clicking the links, doing the stuff. Hey guys, welcome back. And make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and make sure to hit that bell for notifications. Awesome. Thank you very much, Brayden. And so, uh, got a little... Got a little feedback here. The audio quality is a little low. As you can see, we're in a new audio, a new studio. I can hold my mic a little closer. This is my traveling mic. Rode Wireless Go 2. Glad Bray was loud enough. Bray usually is loud enough. Let me tell you, it's not just in the video. So I'm getting feedback, some uh, feedback from my uh, video producer, Chelsea, as we go live. As you can see, we're in a new, new studio, new location. Um, and actually, uh, we're setting up a Another spot, mic close is good, so I'm gonna hold this really close. So that's what I'm doing here, get the mic going. So um, yeah, we're, we're setting up a new location. So actually we're setting up a, a Tampa office and uh, housing situation and all that to go along with um, you know what we got in the DFW area. And so we took the long drive, long drive. We actually went all the way through. Clip it to my shirt. It looks funny when you clip it to your shirt. I don't like that look, Chels. I don't think so, Chels. I'm just going to hold it like here. That looks pretty lame too, huh? Up to you. Thanks, Chels. See? Even we're not in the same room. She's bossing me around like she's supposed to. Tell me what to do. Got to tell this guy what to do. Let me see if I can get a little stand for my mic. Seriously, though, these things are sick. Road Wireless Go-To's. Obviously, I have no affiliate link. Um... When I've been on the road before, we've used these. They're really good for like being um, out and about. The other cool part is even if it doesn't connect to like the obviously I have a wireless transmitter that I'm feeding into the computer and fe feeding our stream our streaming software. But even if you don't have the um, uh, it connected, it actually will record it to the hard drive. So we actually did this once. We were working with a client. We did a bunch of interviews at a live event. And the connection kind of broke on um, the cameras, like it just it disconnected from the cameras. And we're talking like hours and hours and hours of footage. Ooh, I think I got something good for you. So we got a little stand for my mic right in front of me. So we got hours of footage, of testimonials, and we go and pop up the camera, and it's like nothing, just straight, no audio at all. And we were like, whoa. So anyway, we, we fished back through these wireless um, go-tos, and sure enough, all of the content was on there. We just had to smash it together in Premiere Pro. So really cool tool. Um, great if you're doing any video production, stuff like that. It's really great. Um, I've always used it for kind of like direct recording stuff. But then uh, when I hit the, started hitting the road a little bit, the last time we were in Tampa, when we were kind of scoping out everything, I tested this out. And this actually worked out really good. I guess I should not lean back. Gotta lean forward into the mic, into the mic. So yeah, so we, I was in, I was in the car. I mean, we got out of the car and stretched our legs, restaurants, stuff like that. But I left later than I was supposed to on Sunday. I left about five thirty on Sunday, and I got to Tampa at six p.m. yesterday. So that's about twenty four hours, people, in the car with um, the kids, the wife, the dog, and uh, a trailer full of stuff so we could set up some studio stuff and, and just bring some things over to this new place. And uh, man, was that's, you know, sleeping broken hours, taking naps, switching turns. It's crazy. So yesterday, um, totally just spaced on what day and time it was, didn't go live at our typical 5 p.m. Central Time and I mean, I was, uh, I was a mess, and uh, I 
fell asleep like on the floor, literally lay down on the floor while we were setting up something. I fell asleep. I woke up at 11.30 p.m. and realized I didn't go live yet. So it was a train wreck. It was short. Um, you have to go on Twitter because I wasn't even going to try to stream to everything. Um, but I did go live yesterday. So even though it's probably not on the YouTube it is not on the YouTube channel and it's not on some of our other things. It is on the Intent Company Twitter channel. And um, I'm discombobulated. I'm a mess. I didn't make any sense. It was pretty garbage all the way around. But I did go live. So I, the streak is alive. I said I was going to do 75 consecutive lives Monday through Friday. And the streak is alive. Last week, um, the, the lights went out right before we went live. That tried to mess me up. But we went, we went live from the phone. Um, I'm actually even going live right now from my hotspot on my phone. And I think Chelsea's saying it's okay, which is pretty fantastic to think about that. I can't believe it. It is working well. Because this guy forgot to order internet in time. So internet's not coming until Thursday. And my son, who has a Fortnite addiction, is very upset at me. Very upset at me. So I lose my phone often so he can hotspot Fortnite. So... For those that are testing and wondering, I was doing a conference call while he was playing Fortnite on one hotspot. So look at that. Technology is amazing thing. All right. You might be thinking I'm still delirious and still rambling about nothing, and you could be right. But today, we are going to talk about the 10 characteristic traits of successful entrepreneurs. Are there more? I'm sure. Are there a different list? I'm sure. But this is, this is kind of the... I think I was going on my prayer walk last week and I just started thinking about that, like certain characteristics. Because to be a successful entrepreneur, it like, it takes things. Like there's a, there's some stuff you got to go through. There's some things you got to push through. And there are certain character traits that are going to serve you well. And there are certain character traits that are going to hinder your progress. They're going to hinder your potential as an entrepreneur. So I just want to talk through those. We'll actually see how far we get. Usually when I do top tens, it ends up being multiple parts, but we'll see if we can get it in today. So, hey, I want you guys to check out intentcompany.com slash live. We're doing all the stuff still. So, um, 5 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday, sometimes 5 p.m., sometimes 11 p.m., depending on where I land. But every day, Monday through Friday, we're going to go live. We are in week nine. Is that right, Chels? Week nine. I'm pretty sure because we've hit 40, 41, 42. I think we're on day 42 today. I'm sure Chelsea will correct me if I'm wrong. Day 42 of 75 consecutive lives. Kicking inconsistency in the teeth. That's what we're doing. And, oh, just got the buzz. And, yes, 42. I was correct. Day 42. Day 42, Jackie Robinson's number. Or Mariona Rivera, depending on... Uh, which one you want to think about? Mario, do you know that? Mario, Mariano Rivera, he was the last person to have number 42 because Jackie Robinson, they retired all of the jersey numbers. You guys might be like, who are these people and what are you talking about? And that would be fair enough. But talking about baseball jersey numbers here on Intent Company Live, you're, you're very welcome. So if you want more of that amazingness, come back every Monday through Friday, 5 p.m., Woo, we got the dog barking. I think somebody's at the front door while I'm going live. That's awesome. Yes, that's right. This is what you get here. Raw content here. Oh, Bailey, get in here. You guys want to see my dog? He's pretty awesome. Come here. Here's the guy. Here's the guy that's barking. Say hi, Bailey. You know? He's all freaked out. He's in a new place. You know? He's an air conditioning dog. Real raw content. There it is. Yes. So, he is in a new house. He was a little freaked out. So, all the noises, plus mom and the kids went to the beach. Of course, we came to Florida, so he's a little freaked out. Why don't you hang out on my lap, pal? Do a live with me. Hmm? So, um, 
go to intentcompany.com slash live so you can uh, follow this amazing content. You're welcome. And also, you can get access to some other stuff. We've got an Intent Company um, Focus and Fire workshop that we have uh, discounted for only $200. It's a $2,000 workshop. It's fantastic. Um, also, check us out on the rest of the social medias. And then we get some fr free tools. A customer journey assessment. You like our customer journey assessment, Bailey? Oh, yeah. He loves it. And uh, join the Intent Company group as well as our WOW campaign blueprint, which is a great tool if you've already got customers. All right. So Bailey and I are going to give you our top 10 character traits of successful entrepreneurs. So this is going to be awesome. So again, this is just a list that I had come up with. And um, I'm sure you got your own list. You can be successful with other character traits, but to me, all right, you wanna get down, buddy? Get down. All right, he's guarding the door, making sure the bad guys don't get here. So, you know, these to me are 10 very important traits this, for successful entrepreneurs. And, you know, when we think about traits, if you remember back to week one, we did a training on skills, talents, and ambitions. Now, traits aren't in there, right? So you got, um, I talk about talents being things that are just naturally in you that you could obviously develop. Skills are skills, like they're things you learn how to do. Ambitions are, you know, kind of desires that we have, propensities. And traits kind of fits in there as a combination of others. Because if you think about it, traits, you definitely have natural traits. You have certain things that you just naturally kind of are and act and do. Um, but also you can develop traits. Right, like you could sit there and you know you could use the excuse to just be like, well, I have no patience, right? And you say, okay, well maybe your natural disposition isn't to have patience, um, but that doesn't mean that you can't develop patience, right? And that so it's somewhere in between skills and talents. So the things I'm about to mention, there are some of these that you can certainly be more, um, maybe more natural to you, but then you can definitely being intentional, you can develop and create these types of things, right? So the number one trait that I want to share for successful entrepreneurs is actually the word I just mentioned, and that's being intentional. I think if you think about this, to be a successful entrepreneur, to be a success at anything, you actually have to define what success is. Like you actually have to have a, a map this is one thing that I talk a lot about to entrepreneurs and people that are in the performance realm because it's so easy for us to adopt. Um, it's so easy for us to adopt um, uh, goals and desires from the world, right? Like you're supposed to have a certain amount of money, you're supposed to live in a certain place, you're supposed to, you know, we just kind of get, it's like the American dream where you get told what is success. But at the end of the day, like to be successful, you have to define what success is for you. There are many people that have big businesses, have lots of money, and they're not happy. They're not, they're, they're not a success. I mean, we see it all the time where, you know, these, what we believe to be successful people, celebrities, people in the business realm, this and that, and they kill themselves. Um, I mean, I remember about 10 years ago, the suicide rate of um, tech startups, uh, CEOs and things like that. And just, you know, sometimes we make this idea that what we really want is something and then we go after it with all we have to get it and it's just not fulfilling. It's not successful. You know, I, how many times have I, have I met, um, you know, successful entrepreneurs that sold everything they had and moved to move to Florida, go golf, go to the go beach, go whatever. Actually, we used to meet a lot of those surfers that were like that. So they obviously like success varies per person. And so you got to be really clear on what success looks like. And so um, the first thing to be is intentional is that you define what success is and then you actually make intentional steps towards that. And I'd hate to try to make this too simple, but most things in life are like just that that you get really clear about what you actually want, what you actually want, and then you make forward progress towards that, and then you don't stop, which I'm going to talk about that trait in just a minute. So if you think about that, if you just did that always, you know, once in a while you take inventory, what's working, what's not, make yourself better, keep moving forward, don't stop. You're going to be successful. You're going to be successful. 
But you think about it, most things in life are trying to take that away from you. Most things are trying to make you cloudy about what you even want. You know, I, I do a lot of um, mentoring t with young men, in early 20s, like 25 and under, meet with these guys once a week. And, you know, I'll say that sometimes, like, what do you want? And, I, and it's more times than not, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I want, right? So getting really clear about what you want, what's for you, what is, and I would say even more important than what you want, what does God want for your life? Like what is your divine purpose? What is, what is the intention of your life? And if you can figure that out and you can align yourself with that and then you make progress, you're gonna find yourself to be really successful. So you gotta get clear, you gotta define it. Number two, character trait of successful entrepreneurs, humility. I think this is a really misunderstood word, mischaracterized, um, and for certain people it's gonna be really hard to even grasp the desire to be humble because I think we, as a society, associate humility with weakness, right? Humility with passivity. Right, and I think that that's that's a wrong connotation. If you actually really look at the definition of the word and you really think about it, it's not about, you know, it's not it's not thinking. Uh, there's a good quote. It says, "Humility is not thinking less about like um, less about yourself," because that's what most people think, right? Humility is why well, he's so humble because he drives a crappy car or he, um, you know, is super passive, not confident, um, prefers others. Well, that's part of it, but. Humility is actually not about thinking less about yourself. It's just thinking about yourself less. I actually think true confidence, true confidence is a sign. Humility is a sign of true confidence because we have a lot of fake confidence in the world. We have a lot of people with fake confidence and it's, it's really like bravado, right? It's like this, uh, this arrogance that you portray as a way to get by. You see a lot of the gurus and certain people like that and just like, you know, if they cuss enough, if they're jacked enough, if they rip at other people enough, like, oh, look how confident they are. But when you listen to them, most of them just talk about themselves all the time. Everything's really about them. And that's a real sign of actually not having confidence. That's a real sign of insecurity. That's a real sign of saying, I'm insecure. I need you to know how important I am. I need you to know how gifted I am. And so they spend great lengths to make sure you know how amazing they are. And that you know, can get you so far in life. People will pick up on stuff, but it's, it's seriously not humil It's not confidence. It's, it's insecurity, and it's certainly not humility. True confidence is always marked with humility because you don't actually have to worry about what people think about you. You're actually not, you don't care. Like you literally don't care. And that's a beautiful place to be. Where and, and that's another reason why you need to hear from God. You need to hear from God about what he thinks about you, about what he, who he says you are, about who he, who he says where you're going. Because in that place, that gives you true confidence where you don't need the world to tell you how great you are. You don't need to hear the affirmations of every people. And when, you, and when you operate out of that, you end up getting a lot of affirmations even though you're not looking for them. You know, um, honor is like a shadow. Flees from those that pursue it and follows those that don't. And so humility is an absolute um, perfect game, um, is a massive trait of successful people. And I'm going to tell you, it's it, the reason it's so success, reason it's so important for success. When you're not always just looking out for yourself, like when you're just, you're not, you know, you're not all about just you and what's in it for you, you can be other focused. And being other focused is absolutely imperative for serving your customers and serving your employees. And to be honest, successful businesses are businesses that figured out how to serve people the most. And that is your customers and your team. And if you can be other focused, if you can be humble, if you can serve them, it's amazing how successful your business can be. But as long as you're trying to, you know, like I see that a lot of entrepreneurs, like you gotta be the man, you've gotta get all the credit, you gotta be on all call, you gotta make every decision. Man, I'm, I'm, man, you wanna get other people to own the parts of your business. You want other people to be taking responsibility for those things, that's super, super important, okay? All right, number three character trait of successful entrepreneurs is honesty. 
You got to be honest. You got to be honest with yourself. You got to be honest with your team. You got to be honest with your customers. Again, this is a big one we talked before. I forgot which one. I talk about it a lot about how you market your business. You know, you're mar- you can market through manipulation. I always, I always bring up Coca-Cola, right? Like, what's Coca-Cola sell? And it's like, it was soda. And it's like, well, look, look at their ads. Do they sell soda? No. They sell fun, youth, family, Christmas. And, they, and they're trying to make an association that if you drink Coca-Cola, you can do a kickflip or your kids will come home for Christmas. Or, and it's, that's just not being honest, right? And then you get CEOs and leaders and entrepreneurs that aren't honest with their employees or honest about the quality of their product. And it's like, man, what a terrible way to live, to just always be living in a lie, always trying to squeeze and manipulate people. And you know what? It always comes up. It always comes to the surface. It always, you got to be honest. Trust is the currency of relationship. And a massive aspect of that is honesty. You got to be honest. Number four is like honesty, but different. It's faithful. Because you could be unfaithful, but honest about it. Faithful is you're full of faith. Most people don't say it that way, but you're full of faith. Are you full of faith towards your organization? Are you full of faith towards your purpose and your calling? Are you, you know, full of faith towards the people around you? Like you gotta trust people, right? Trust, you know, they say like trust is trust isn't, you know, given, it's earned. And I get what you're saying with that, because what you're saying is you have to show yourself to be a trustworthy person. But to be honest, being faithful and being trust trusting is actually like the more you trust others, the more they rise up to that trust. Like if you always feel like you can't trust your employees and you're micromanaging and you're all of this other stuff, guess what? Like you actually breed that sort of distrust in your in your organization. So you need to be full of faith. You need to be faithful to others, meaning people can trust you, but then also you need to trust other people. Like this is a team sport. Unless you want to be, you know, Mr. Solopreneur, like to be a legitimate entrepreneur, to be a legitimate business that you can step away from and that other people can run your organization and other people can um, can make it happen. You're not the centerpiece of every single thing. To be that person, you have to be faithful and you have to develop faithful people. And so you have to be the example and and to create that. All right, number five successful trait of successful entrepreneurs. And I, I hope you see, I'm, tr- I'm picking a lot of these that are like intentionally not the ones you kind of think, right? Like driven and, you know, good communicator, blah, blah, blah. And those are kind of skills anyway. Those are skills. Being a good communicator is super important to be an entrepreneur. These are traits, not skills. But I'm, I'm talking about the, the heart condition. You know, it's Ralph Waldo Emerson that has this great quote. He says, who you are screams so loudly that I can't hear the words that you're saying. And most people are trying to say the right things to get a perception of how people perceive them. But much easier is just to be a good person. Just be legit. Don't try to convince people you're anything. Just be that person. Just be that person. You don't have to, you don't have to persuade. You don't have to try. You don't have to... I mean, man, it's a lot f- more freeing when you're not out there trying to convince everybody of that you're this and that. Thing. Just become it. Just become it. And let you let who you are attract the right people in your life and who you are repel the wrong people out of your life. And that's super important. Okay, so if you're going to be intentional, you're going to be humble, you're going to be honest, you're going to be faithful, this next one, number five, is so imperative and is one of the biggest, most difficult things for people in general, but entrepreneurs as well. Number five is you have to be forgiving. You gotta be able to forgive. I'm telling you, we live in a world of grudges. We live in a world of revenge. We live in a world of um, keeping the score with other people. Man, I'm telling you, what what a hard way to live. You got to be quick to forgive, quick to ask for forgiveness and quick to forgive. You know, if you're going to do entrepreneurship, like I said, it's a team sport. It is a team sport and 
you've got to be able to trust people and that means that you need to be able to that people let you down there are some people who cannot deal with people letting them down they do not have the capability to deal with it they hold too many grudges they get too frustrated with people like you've got to be able to forgive and you got to be able to ask for forgiveness because you're going to mess up so being a forgiving human being is a fantastic trait to have in being an entrepreneur a husband a father, a mother, whatever you, you know, whatever, wherever you're at, whoever you are, forgiveness is super important. Freedom is tied to forgiveness. Most people aren't free because they're in emotional bondage. And almost all emotional bondage comes from some sort of trauma from your past, some kind of resentment that you have toward people, and you literally carry around offenses and people in the cage of your heart and you're weighed down by those things. And that's why most most entrepreneurs, most business people, they're, they're micromanaging because there's, oh, I, I hired somebody before and they didn't do the job and now I'm gonna, like, it's like, man, if somebody burned you in the past and all of a sudden you're gonna throw all those relationships out the door. That just shows your emotional maturity. Forgiveness is like the highest form of emotional maturity. And I mean like forgiveness, forgiveness. Like having to forgive big things. Because like for, the thing is, is you think about it, when you're in unforgiveness, what you're literally doing, I know I'm, I'm knocking on some, some doors now. This is for everybody. If you, are, if you live in unforgiveness, you almost think what you're doing is, well, no, I, I have to hold this person accountable. I have to hold them accountable for what they did to me. Here's the thing. They probably don't even think about it anymore. They don't think about you anymore. They don't think about that anymore. And you are constantly have this negativity in your heart. You're carrying it around and it's weighing you down. The only person that's hurting because of unforgiveness is you. So you got to go through the process of fully forgiving Letting go. Now, does that mean you, is forgiveness the same as trusting? No, because some people like, you know, somebody embezzled money and somebody stole all your customers or did even worse stuff, you know, to you, your family, your business, all those things. That doesn't mean that you just trust them. It just means that you don't carry their offenses in your heart anymore. I could do a whole, I could do a whole live on forgiveness. It's a big one. It's a big one. But be quick to forgive and be quick to ask for forgiveness. All right, number six, character trait of successful people, entrepreneurs, husbands, fathers, mothers, whatever. Be collaborative. Again, this is another byproduct of emotional maturity and confidence. You do not have all the answers. You don't have all the answers. And so the quickest way to expand your tool set, you can think as an entrepreneur, it's crazy to think about. As an entrepreneur, you get access to the skills, the experience, the, the, the perspective of all of your employees, right? And so again, smaller companies, emotionally immature individuals, they think they have to do everything. And if they do add on somebody that's usually like some, you know, entry level person, short change, you know, VA over, overseas, you know, type thing, and you're getting this one little trait, this one little kind of push the button, do the thing over and over again. But when you actually bring in good people, you got good people, bring in people that are better than you at most things. Like you just need to be the best entrepreneur. You don't need to be the best at anything. Other else, that's what you bring in a team. As soon as you get to employ them, you get access to all the stuff that they are and what they've done. You get access to all their stuff. And so you just keep bringing on these resources, keep bringing on these individuals. And then pretty soon, wow, like you think about the wealth of experience and ideas and capabilities and all these things you get to add in your organization. So you have to do that, but you have to be an individual that's, that's, able to collaborate. You don't have to have all the main ideas. You don't have to be the person who got credit for everything. You got to be able to collaborate. And that means there's a lot into that. One, it's a heart condition. 
just having a heart condition of, yeah, I want to work well with others. I want to, I want to connect in, in here and things. But then also there are skills that are associated with that trait, like communication, like setting expectations, um, like praising people and, you know, all those different things. But having, being collaborative is an unbelievable trait. And it's in- interesting because in our society, collaboration in almost in all education, like all the way through grad school and everything else, collaboration is actually called cheating. I don't want to get me going on our school system. It, our school system is designed to create minions that make other people rich. I will say that. You think I'm wrong? Correct me. Or else, let's dis- let's disagree. From the hours to the the way education's taught to the um, you know you can't do teamwork can't collaborate that's cheating, and that's like all through college and everything else. Don't get me going on like MBAs and all that stuff. I mean, how many MBAs are taught by somebody who doesn't have a business? You're going you're getting a master's in business and you have teachers that are literally teaching out of a textbook and have no experiential knowledge. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent. Collaborative, collaborate. The better you are at collaborating, getting people to collaborate with you, believing in your vision, giving them the, 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 the agency to go and do what they need to do. Man, that's a, that's a major ingredient for successful entrepreneurs and businesses. All right, number seven, which um, kind of goes along with it, is resourceful resourceful seventh character trait of successful entrepreneurs you got to be able to be resourceful it means you need to be full of resource full of resource now again sometimes you say like oh well yeah i'm resourceful i'm just somebody who just always figures it out it's not quite what i mean figuring it out is great but just because you figured it out doesn't mean you need to do it all being resourceful i believe is is akin to being a great problem solver Right? You're able to see the problem and then create the resources that are necessary to solve that problem. And what we just talked about, having a great team is a resource. Right? Being able to acquire, manage, funding, um, you know, cash flow, um, connections, network, all that stuff are resources. Skills, giftings, creative ideas, it's all being resourceful. And so one thing you got to be um, to be a successful entrepreneur is be resourceful. But again, I want to say that, that what I'm not saying is that you need to be everything, right? I just had a call with a client, said, you know, multi million dollar business, not a client, a, a prospect, and they're not becoming my client. And one of the, the reasons they said is like, oh, they're just going to figure it out. They're going to build it all. Like, you know, when you're owners, when you're the owner of a multi million dollar business and you're going to spend time, you know, building websites and writing emails and automation, and it's just not what you do. It's a sign that you have limited thinking, you have limited capabilities, you have limited scope of understanding resourcefulness. There are other people that you, there's resources that you can get to do that. And the more full you are of resources, resourceful, full of resource, the more full you are of resources, the easier it is to execute the easier it is to get where you need to go, the easier it is to serve people and solve problems. Like you've got to be full of resource. You have to be resourceful. All right, number eight, purpose-driven. I believe, and this goes back to number one, you're going to see these last three are part of our kind of intent um, company, our intent kind of methodology here. And number eight is to be purpose-driven. You could set a goal to have a hundred million dollar a year business. You can work hard, do all the stuff, and make a hundred million dollar a year business. And does that mean you're successful? I, I think it depends. If you lost your marriage over it, if you have no relationship with your kids, if you're physically burned out and you're working eighty hours a week and you're fried and you're miserable and I do not call that a success. I think that you, you, you wasted it. Would it, better, would it be better to have a $10 million a year business and be married? 
happily married? Would it be better to have a million dollar business and to have a great relationship with your kids and for for them to be healthy and um, have a loving relationship with their parents and be well adjusted and, um, you know, good kids and staying out of trouble? Like what, like, what is it worth? And so again, like I said in the first one, being successful is kind of a loaded phrase because what really is success? And if you're too narrow in your definition of success, oh, it's money, it's a car, it's prestige, it's this award, it's you know this interview, this person knows me, that thing happened, that award. Like how, again, how many Academy Award winners have killed themselves or OD'd or whatever? Was that a success? So the way that you maintain your direction, the way that you make sure that you're you're not going outside the rule, the the, the uh, boundaries, is with purpose, being a purpose driven entrepreneur. And so you know we talk about serving people and solving problems and core values and um, you know what are the I, I've I've used this analogy uh, before actually I got this from a CEO of mine. Um, that I used to work for back, you know, 10 years ago or so. And um, he used the analogy of the Golden Gate Bridge. And he said, how fast would you drive over the Golden Gate Bridge if it did not have guardrails? Not very fast. All right? But if you have guardrails, how fast do you go? Ah, you go 70 miles an hour over it. No, don't even think about it. So guardrails, purpose is like your guardrails of your life. You got to be really clear about what the purpose is. I want to have this, but I'm not willing to do that. Like you have to have real clear guardrails. And the clearer your guardrails, the more freedom there is to flow and run in between there. And you can make sure that, you know, you're not going 100 miles an hour is great. Going 100 miles an hour off a bridge, not so great. So you got to have purpose. Number nine, characteristic trait of successful entrepreneurs is passion. Passion. You know, if purpose is like the destination, purpose is the uh, the guardrails, like purpose is like the flow, like, hey, as long as we're going here, we're doing what we need to do. If that's, if that's purpose, passion is having fun while you're doing it. It's having fire. It's having excitement. Loving what you do, loving who you serve, loving who you get to do it with, having a fire in your belly, being passionate and ideas like, man, life's too short. Let's, let's do stuff that fires us up. You know, again, I, I hear this all the time where I'll have people come to me and they want advice for entrepreneurship and, you know, they're like, oh, I know this, this there's this new niche coming out because, you know, we this AI thing just came out and so or the crypto or this or that and, and nothing wrong with AI and crypto. I was like, are you passionate about that? Uh, no. Why do you want to do it? Oh, I heard there's a lot of money to be made there. I'm like, mm. unless you're super materialistic, image conscious, your value as a human being is defined by your check checking account, you probably won't push through to be successful or not if you don't have passion about what you're doing. Like why? Like there's so many things you do. You can make money doing like anything. So why not do things that you're passionate about? Why not do things that get you on fire? Why not do things that, you know, now does that mean every part of business just supposed to be fun and like this? Now of course it's a grind and it's there's you got to get it. You got to you got to do stuff. But you know, are you are you energized by the work that you do? Are you energized by the people you get to serve? Are you energized by the people that are surrounding you to do it? Passion, fire. Man, that's a much better way to do things and uh, I believe a much greater sign of success when you love what you're doing. And Jim Rohn says, success isn't what you get, it's who you become in the process. And I think you need passion to do that. All right, number 10 of the successful traits of, no, traits of successful entrepreneurs. Number 10, perseverance. Let me, and I did a whole thing on perseverance, but let me even change it and give you some some synonyms. I would say grit, determination, 
even a bit of stubbornness. You gotta be a little stubborn. You know, when things don't look like they're going well or you got some adversity, you know, you kind of just gotta be, mm. you gotta have a, you gotta have some grit. You gotta be able to push. You gotta be able to press against the resistance because there is resistance. Anyone who tells you that they've got the funnel formula, push the button, do the thing, get rich, make the I book AI thingy, dude, no. Anything worth it in life requires perseverance, grit, determination. And you know, you may think, oh, I'm not naturally that way. You've got to develop it. And you develop it by repping it out. Like literally, actually, I was just just watching um, the interview with uh, Andrew Huberman and David Goggins. You got to check that out. And uh, um, there's definitely a lot of language, but anything David Goggins does has a lot of language. But I love Andrew Huberman. You know, he's a, a scientist and, and provides kind of like like actual scientific research for why like human motivation and performance and success and all those things. And he's got some great stuff. And he literally was talking about a part of the brain. I forgot the name of it. Um, I'm going to get Chelsea to post the link. But um, yeah, Andrew Huberman interviews David Goggins. And he talked about how this particular part of the brain, um, that they did a bunch of studies and the most successful people, people who have accomplished a lot, athletes, people who are very fit, um, you know, just people who are generally um, successful, when they studied this part of the brain, their brain was much larger than those that would say they weren't successful. You know, they, they have not achieved the goals they want. They were obese. They were not happy. And, um, and what they, they've realized is that this part of the brain is directly correlated. Now, listen to this directly correlated to your ability to do things that you don't want to do. Okay? Not just do hard things, but do things that you don't want to do. Now, that's kind of what grit and determination is. Because yes, you want passion. Yes, you want to do work you love. Yes, you want to do it for people you love and everything. But you know what? All the time you're faced with this thing of like, I don't want to actually make these phone calls. I don't actually want to go live every single day. I don't want to, there's things that like in the moment, you're like, I just don't want to do this. But there's something about when you've made a decision. I decide I'm going to do this whether I want to do it or not. I've made the decision. That's why, again, these challenges like a 75 live or, you know, 75 hard, Andy Frazella, all, the, all these things, you're literally putting yourself in a position where you're going to do what you said you're going to do no matter how you feel, no matter what you want to do. You're going to do it. And when you do that, you literally enlarge a part of your brain that makes it easier to do that. It makes it easier. It makes it easier for do, you to do things you don't want to do. Wouldn't that be a great trait? Think about that, right? Um, Richard Biggs has one of my favorite quotes. I know I say that to I must have a lot of favorite quotes. Uh, I do, actually. But uh, Richard Biggs has a quote that says, the greatest gap in life is the one between knowing and doing. The greatest gap in life is the one between knowing and doing. Most people, think about this. Think about how crazy this is. Most people who want to be successful have that gap, again, between where they are and where they want to be. What they typically do, I'm guilty of this. I've done this many times. Right? You're like, let's say you want to get fit, right? You're like, okay, I'm going to get fit. I'm going to start working out. I'm going to do stuff. And what do you do? You go and get like a, an exercise plan, a diet plan. You sign up for this app that does the tracking with the this and the that and get the stuff. Guess what? That, those are excuses. Those are things in the way. Like anyone knows how to get fitter. Move and stop eating crap. Like literally just do that. Like you could... You could do that for the next couple of years and you would get fitter, right? A lot of like the, oh, the detailed, like, you know, bulking phase and this and that and the macros counting calories. Like that's like, it's the 80-20 principle, right? 80% of your results are going to get from 20% of what you need to do. You already know what to do to be successful. You already know. There's the 20% of activities that you need to do to get you 80% of the results. Nobody needs to tell you what they are. You pick up the phone and you call people to buy stuff. You make the content. You do the stuff. You hire the person. You do it. 
right? You, you stop eating crap. You work out. You run. You lift something heavy. Like you just do it. You just do it. You need to make a decision. But we use kind of these things as excuses, being like, well, you know what? If I you know, do this and I get these right shoes and if I do that and you make all this like, listen, I need to get the macro counter. I need to know what my macros are and get my, you know, my T levels and my this so I can do that. Listen, that's the 20, that's the 20% that you're missing, right? If, if, if 20% of action is going to give you 80% of your effort, what you're talking about with all that nuance is the 20% of performance from 80% of the action. You're, gonna, you're having to spend 80% of your time getting the next 20. Why even bother? Listen, you don't even need that yet. You just need to do the things you need to do. The greatest gap in life is the one between new, knowing and doing, and you just got to execute. There's probably five things that would completely change your life. It's probably like even less than that. But I bet right now you could write down on a piece of paper, if I did these five things every single day, my life would be transformed. You could, you could literally, you could write something down for your business. Make 50 sales calls. Make 10 sales calls. Make one for your body. Stop eating that. Run every day. For your marriage, right? Date my wife every week. Do this, do that. Like you can literally, like for your family, you could just write down one thing and you, your life would be transformed if you did it every day, every day. But you need grit. You need determination. You need to be stubborn. I was already making excuses for what I was going to say. You know, I mean, I was in a car for 24 hours. I couldn't go live. You know, we had no internet at the house, you know. All these reasons. And I remember being like, no, like you said you're going to do this. You made a decision. I don't need to cop out because I already made a decision. I'm going to do it every day. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to love it. You don't even have to see it. It doesn't even matter if it sucks. You're going to do it every day. So I already made the decision that I was going to do it. So I had to do it. Had to do it. What are you going to decide Make a decision. The word decide, like the Latin root of it means to cut off from. Meaning it's like everything else you're cutting off from, this is what you're going to do. Be stubborn about your daily disciplines. So those are the 10 characteristics of successful entrepreneurs. Business people, husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, students, these are successful traits. You probably have other ones. Put them in the comments. Be intentional. Be humble. Be honest. Be faithful. Be forgiving. Be collaborative. Be resourceful. Be purpose-driven. Be full of passion. And be stubborn in your execution of the things that you know are most important. Fix your eyes on where you want to go. Keep putting one foot in front of the other and don't stop. And you're going to get there. Don't stop. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys. Hopefully this uh, Hotspot Live turned out pretty good. Um, appreciate you. Appreciate you all. And so I hope you guys found some nuggets out of this that helped you. We'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Central Time. I'm Billy Robbins, the founder of Intent Company. Have an amazing night. God bless you.